Sairam. It was sometime in 1970 or 1971 that Air Marshal Om Prakash Mehra, OP Mehra, received communication that he had to move from the capital city of India, New Delhi, to a southern city, Bengaluru. He had to take over the chairmanship of HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, a public sector company where the government of India has more than 50% stake, which is involved in the manufacture of combat aircraft, mainly for the Indian Air Force. Now, this is a very prestigious appointment for anybody else, but not for Mr. Mehra, because he had set his targets for his career very high. And he was disappointed that he was now moving away from the place where he could make maximum progress in his career, which is New Delhi, to some city which is far away in South India, Bangalore. However, orders are orders and he had to take over the chairmanship. As he moved to Bangalore, he got to know that the accommodation that was being provided to him was not yet ready. And so temporarily, he had to stay somewhere else. What did he do? He called on the governor of the state of Karnataka, which was back then the state of Mysore. He called on Mr. Dharma Veera at the Raj Bhavan. The Raj Bhavan is a palatial grand residence for the governor of the state. This just shows you the kind of influential person that Mr. Mehra was. The governor told him, Till you get your official accommodation, you're welcome to stay with me at the Raj Bhavan. Wow! <laughs> that is something huge. But it was something natural for Mr. Mehra. So he and his wife moved in along with the governor of the state in the Raj Bhavan. One day, the governor said, Why don't we go tomorrow to meet Satisai Baba? Now, Mr. Mehra did not believe in all these sadhus, saints, babas and all that and so he just kept quiet. But it was his wife who immediately said, Oh brother, bhaiya, she addressed the governor as an elder brother. She said, yes, it would be wonderful, we will join you. And thus it was that the next day morning, as Mr. Mehra was getting ready, as Air Marshal Mehra was getting ready to leave for Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, his wife said, what are you doing? We have to go and meet Satisai Baba. He said, I am not interested in meeting any Baba. You are the one who agreed to go, so you go. I am going to go for work. Work is worship. What Air Marshal Mehra did not know back then was that was the point when God had decided to enter his life. He would enter his life through the three Ohms. What are the three Ohms? <laughs> it's not just the Omkaram. The first Om is Omnipresence. The second Om is Omnipotence. The third Om is Omniscience. The three Ohms were about to be experienced by Air Marshal O.P. Mehra and that would change his life forever. What started off as a discussion soon grew into an argument. The wife, Mrs. Satya Mehra, was insistent that they both should go and see Satisai Baba. But the husband, Air Marshal Mehra, was not at all interested. He said, look here, I have come here to seriously grow in my profession, in my career. I don't have time to waste. For me, work is worship. I don't want to waste time, especially on these babas and such stuff. Without knowing, he was speaking. He went on to say, you know, all these babas, these holy men, these are all hoaxes. They are frauds. In fact, I know that Satisai Baba is pulling out rings and chains from thin air. That is a magic trick. A trick that a magician like P.C. Sarkar will do. Back then in the 1970s, people would often compare Swami to this magician in India who was growing in popularity and he had the audacity also to challenge Swami on an occasion. So he said, I am not interested in all this, I am going. 
but then as i said the time had come see when swami decides can anybody stop can anybody stop the ultimate decision maker of the universe our bhagwan is at that point in time a messenger entered the room and said the governor sahib is waiting for both of you the car is ready to go to vrindavan now this would be an insult to the governor the first citizen of the state if he did not go and therefore air marshal mehra and his wife both accompanied the governor and went to vrindavan swami's ashram in bangalore as they sat for darshan swami came walking towards them the governor got up and introduced air marshal mehra to swami he said this is air marshal mehra and swami said yes i know hal hindustan aeronautics limited swami knew and air marshal mehra was surprised how did swami know this and then swami turned to him and said mehra tum theek bolta hai what you said is right you should not waste your time on babas and other such stuff work is worship focus on your work do your work diligently and well that will help you that is good for you now the jaw was beginning to drop swami was revealing things that he had told only his wife and his wife had never left his presence nor made a phone call nor done anything swami did not stop at that he continued after all baba swami all these are fake right they just do cheap magic tricks and act like they have divine powers now the air marshal was shivering swami was repeating verbatim everything that he had spoken in fact he confesses in a special article that he wrote in the souvenir book for the 80th birthday celebrations of bhagwan that was released in that he confesses that he had used some unparliamentary language on swami and swami came close to him and repeated those same words that same unparliamentary language and said babas are like this right we should not come to them finished bold <laughs> the omnipresence of bhagwan was realized by air marshal in an instant in a moment he felt that swami was there listening to every bit of their conversation and repeating it verbatim here swami then called him in for an interview and there swami said why are you always worrying delhi 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 swami said not only did swami know what he was speaking swami was aware of what he was thinking as well Swami said you are very worried don't get worried everything will be achieved you will reach great heights you just don't worry focus on your work and do your duty well work is worship what you said is very true focus and do that with that air marshal om prakash mehra became a devotee of bhagwan shri sati sai baba he offered himself at the lotus feet he fell down did namaskar swami then told him come back after a week again for darshan and yes this time he did not he can refuse the governor's invitation you cannot refuse the invitation of the emperor of the universe the chancellor of the cosmos that was his experience of the omnipresence of swami an year or so later his daughter and son in law came to visit him in bangalore they had come there for holidays at that time the son in law developed severe stomach pain and backache he began to get nauseous he was vomiting and he was in unbearable pain he was rushed to the hospital and when they checked they found out that he had kidney stones the doctors recommended that a surgery should be done immediately and the stones be removed in order to bring relief to this person now air marshal mehra consulted with bhagwan by now swami would be the one who would take all decisions <laughs> when he consulted with swami swami said there is no need for any surgery so he asked the son in law's father who was in hyderabad back then what they should do 
Now, the father was very worried about his son, and so he said, "Let us proceed with the surgery," and that is what was done. The surgery was carried out; it was successful. All the stones were removed, and the son-in-law was back to health. Air Marshal Mehra, he knew that he had done something that Swami had told not to, but then all's well that ends well, right? But that ended well only for three days because three days later, once again the son-in-law was in severe pain. He had collapsed in the bathroom, and then he revealed that for the past twenty-four hours he had not been able to pass urine. Once again, tests were done hastily in a hurry, and then they saw that the entire ureter, the excretory canal, had been blocked. He was unable to pass urine, and the doctor said. Immediate surgery is needed. Twenty-four hours he has not been able to do. So what did Air Marshal Mehra do? Immediately he rushed to Swami. He was lucky to catch Swami speaking to some of the students. Brindavan in those days, you know, Swami would be interacting. There was no formal darshan hall. It was open grounds with trees, the lap of nature. Swami was interacting with the students, and he saw Mehra, and he walks up. To Air Marshal Mehra and says, "क्या हुआ Mehra? Son-in-law बहुत तंग करता है. Meaning, your son-in-law is troubling you. He is having a lot of pain. He is not able to pass urine. The stomach has got very bloated. No? <laughs> Swami knows everything. His omniscience is supreme. But then there is also the omnipotence. His power. His power is present everywhere." he can do anything from anywhere because swami told him no need of surgery but swami they have rushed him now he might be on the operating uh, table right now i think because it's such an emergency swami then waves his hand materializes vibhuti gives it to him and says go and apply it in the abdominal area it will all be fine the air marshal rushes to the hospital with the vibhuti applies the vibhuti as swami has said but then he can't tell them don't do the operation because he has been prepped he is ready for the operation he has been taking being taken in into the operating theater 15 minutes later the doctors come out what happened doctor no there was no need for the operation why on the operating table even before we could begin the block simply seemed to have cleared all the urine is out he is fully fine now hale and hearty he can walk out of the hospital to home that is the omnipotence the second om of our bhagwan all powerful all majesty all grandeur his sankalpa is enough the third om omniscience The 17th of December 1971 is a very important date in the annals of Indian history. That was the day when Pakistan surrendered in the war and an entire new country Bangladesh which was formerly East Pakistan was created. On precisely this day the 17th of December 1971 Swami was at the Raj Bhavan the residence of the governor the same governor Dharamvira and not surprisingly Air Marshal OP Mehra and his wife too were invited for this during that visit swami called the wife and told her satya ma see that is how swami would address the ladies satya ma means mother satya he called her and said satya ma mehra is going to delhi for what swami he is going in the place of lal lal pc lal was the air chief marshal meaning the supreme head of the air force that's the highest rank you can achieve during peace times and swami said he is going to replace him wow the wife was simply taken aback and then swami said go tell him this she then requested swami Swami this is such a huge declaration that you have made and something which is stupendous please you should only convey it to him okay call him i will tell him and so when he came swami told it to him 
and the air marshal was thrilled beyond doubt all his life he had been working and trying to grow in his career to reach the highest levels and here swami was simply telling him that he will be at the highest level as the next air chief marshal for india he bowed down he saluted he was very very happy in the heart but then within a week his heart sank because he got to know it was not possible for him to reach the air chief marshal position why because usually the air chief marshal is picked from among the three senior most officers of the indian air force and there were three senior most officers whose tenure had been extended by the government and therefore he was not even in the reckoning so he was very disappointed and he was wondering why did swami say this when there is no chance of him becoming that when he went for darshan the next time swami came near him and asked gussa hai you are angry a few more weeks passed the next time he was in darshan swami comes near him and tells him bahut gussa hai you are very angry he doesn't know what to say then swami asks him what happened why are you so upset come takes him in for an interview and in the interview air marshal mehra opens up his heart and tells swami what you said on 17th december back then uh, it's not going to happen swami i'm not in the reckoning once again swami told him work is worship duty is god you do your duty diligently you leave the rest you don't worry you know swami has said it right when swami has said it has to happen over the next few months he got to know that out of the three candidates one of them had actually declined to take up that position and therefore the next senior most member was called to be part of the trio and that was air marshal mehra now he was in the reckoning and yet among the three he was the junior most so what is the probability of him being elevated to the top spot exactly one year from the time swami had made that prediction that was 17th december 1971 in the middle of december 1972 jagjivan ram who was then the defense minister of india visited swami in brindavan along with him was air marshal shivdev singh one of the seniors in that trio air marshal mehra was also there and after the interview that swami gave the defense minister when he was leaving he looked at air marshal shivdev singh and said chief let's go hearing this mr mehra felt that he is going to be the air chief marshal because he has even addressed him as chief the defense minister has called him chief and once again disappointment entered his heart a weeks later as he was conducting a board meeting at hindustan aeronautics limited there was a knock on the door and the messenger brought in good news that he had been selected as the air chief marshal for india dear brothers and sisters the story did not end there swami had told air marshal op mehra that he would be rising to great heights right that's what happened after being the air chief marshal for the indian air force he became the governor of maharashtra one state he was the governor he didn't end there he then became the governor for another state the state of rajasthan he headed the indian olympic committee he headed the asian games committee he held multiple positions of great responsibility and honor he was also honored and granted the second highest civilian award in india the padma vibhushan he scaled great heights in his name and fame just as swami had said and he did it with complete faith in swami and doing what swami told him which is just do your work diligently duty is god work is worship thus it was that mr om prakash mehra experienced the three oms the omnipresence the omnipotence and omniscience of bhagwan shri satyasai baba 
dear brothers and sisters whenever i think of stories like this whenever i read such stories of the leelas of bhagwan sri satyasai baba three things strike me the first is that there are so many people in the world whom we think are very powerful rich influential and so many people whom we think are powerless helpless how wrong are we in our thinking because everybody is just an actor in the drama nobody is a hero all are zeros that become heroes when they are next to swami the second point god is the only hero sai is the only hero and when we have sai with us we have the three ohms also with us the omniscience the omnipotence and the omnipresence why do we worry why fear when he is here why fear when he is near why fear when he is dear the third point is the point that swami always stressed to air chief marshal op mehra do your duty work is worship do your best i'll take care of the rest let us do our best god will do the rest what we always do is we want to take rest and make god do the best that will not happen let us put in our best efforts as an offering of our love and devotion to swami he will fill our lives with his omnipresence omnipotence and omniscience dearest swami may our love for you in our hearts keep growing stronger every passing moment thank you jai sai ram